Now in the fucking level threes, you're gonna spend a lot of motherfucking time in your cell, so you're gonna need your hot pot for your coffee. You're gonna need your bag of soups under your bed for the lockdown. I stayed with the 150 top ramen under my bed tucked at all times and 20 bags of beans in case that year long lockdown hit and we couldn't get canteen. You always keep that lockdown bag under the fucking bed. Lockdown bag has five jars of coffee, 150 soups, 20 bags of beans. You don't touch that motherfucker. That's the necessities for life in there. When shit goes foul, that's how you're gonna live. Permiso on the tira. It's gonna be the Southsiders doing the first roll call. They're calling out to their people by name, cell by cell. I would always hear the, the main Southsider, Casper. I would hear the shot caller for the back. I would hear him calling out to his people and he had the savagest voice. He would just say, Diaz, like good morning to everybody. And his voice was so deep and so crazy, it was just demonic. And this is at 3.30 in the morning, every morning in your cold ass, dark ass fucking cell in the shoe. Now this shit was just a life changing experience because I didn't see who Casper, what he looked like for eight months. Then when I finally saw him, I was shocked. He was fucking white. But then I thought about it and Casper fit. You know, the homies make their names fit the way they look. They're always good at that shit. But after the homie roll call is when the white boys do their roll call. We call out to our people. We say good morning. We give the, we give the notification that we're up and we're programming because you have to be up programming even if that cell fucking door ain't opening. Now we've adopted a lot of these proper programming techniques from the homies, from the Southsiders, the woodpile, the whites. We have an allegiance with the Southsiders. We've had this allegiance since the 50s or even before. Now we've adopted a lot of their proper programming tactics because they're useful. They get results. People, once they push themselves further and further and further each day, the confidence is strengthened. The bond between each other is strengthened. That's why there is roll call. That's why we do get up at a certain time. That's why we owe our people yard time. That's why we owe our people a certain amount of dedication and sacrifice and put our lives on the line. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen and it happened very quickly. The homeboy Viking from Dago, his celly, couldn't pay on the 150 that he co-signed for him on another race on. He went and grabbed that bone crusher he held his own celly down in the fucking day room in front of everybody. And before we knew it, he was already on the third pump, just pushing this fucking 10 inch fucking bone crusher into homie's chest. Just pumping it, pumping it. He was pushing down so hard, he had to pump it into his chest cavity. Now by that time, this, the, the fucking sirens going off, fucking everyone's fucking getting down everyone's on the floor the cops are screaming and this fool is still pumping this 10 inch knife into this fool's chest over 150 fucking bucks but it wasn't the 150 bucks it was his fucking word your word is gold in there you don't break it for nothing or you lose your fucking life that's as simple as it is now the floor cop is yelling at the cop in the tower take the fucking shot take that shit and the fool's frozen he's got the gun out He's, he's aiming at the fool. The cop purposely shoots not by him. And it ricochets, ding, ding, just. The craziest part was when I look around and I saw a few people who actually ducked and were tripping. And then I seen a lot of other people who almost had a look on their face like they wished that bullet ricocheted and fucking hit him in the head. This is fool's doing life. This is life without parole. This is what it feels like. Even doing 10 years, you feel like you're never getting out. Never. I seen these northerners at a fucking level two, at fucking Delano, just massacre this fool. They rode his fucking body down the metal stairs. Like, they were poking the shit out of him upstairs. They all took it to the stairs, and they basically fell down him on top of the dude. Thump, 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 down the stairs. They all rolled, and then continued poking the shit out of him at the bottom. Someone's getting a life sentence. That dude's dead. And everyone always asks, how many people die? Everybody fucking probably dies. You don't hear about it. You're not gonna get on your phone 
when you have barely any time to call your chick or your friends and Google, did Jorge Samson fucking Samson die? No, you're not going to do that. Like people might tell you, hey, that fool died or you might hear about it on the news or something. They don't even put that shit on the fucking news unless it's a cop that gets whacked or a cop that gets busted bringing some shit in. They don't talk about the shit that happens in the pen. So, I mean, you're dealing with some fucking nutcases, but the worst part is, is they got feeling, I've said it before, motherfuckers out there think that people don't have a conscience. The problem is, is everybody has a conscience. Sometimes we're just too far removed from thinking we can come back to life, thinking we can undo this karma. So we get caught up in the negativity and we just wash our life up. So this is the facts. People are always like, Wes, say it ain't so, Wes. Tell me it's not racist. It's 2019. Do we have to live like this? Yeah, motherfucker. If you're GP, you have no choice and you're going to live like this. I'm going to push the line on you. Your fellow people are going to push the line on you. Like I've said before, even when my old ass dad went to county jail in Dago, they pushed the line on him. So the fact is, is don't go to prison if this shit is shocking to you. There is no rape in California prison because of these politics. Do you want these politics or do you want booty bandits and this other shit that they talk about in these other states' prison channels? We don't have that shit. GP California, if anybody got into anything like that, they would be dead on the spot. If you're white, if you're homie, if you're paisa, anything like that, this is not happening. It's never happened. I've never seen it. This would be murder on the spot. So these are the reasons why the politics exist. And that's why I back them. It, would you rather fucking worry about that or this? I would rather flip, flip a coin or roll the dice every day of the week and have to put in some work than have to worry about that other shit. It's not because it was so savage in there. It's not because the stabbings. It's not because the violence. It's because of missing everybody. It's because of the emotional torture and torment that you go through day in, day out by asking that question. When? Why? What? How? Like, when is this going to end? 